Buenos dias e welcome to the final CD Talk of the 2020 annual meeting. Today, we will discuss how the IMF and the government of Colombia work together to adjust the macroeconomic frameworks to assess the impact of COVID-19. We will start, <coughs> sorry, we will start with an introduction by Fernando Delgado, Deputy Chief of the Western Hemisphere Division of the IMF Institute for Capacity Development. After that, we will play a pre-recorded interview between IMF economists Andres Gonzalez and Diego Rodriguez and Colombian authorities Sebastian Corrales from the Central Bank and Danielle Wills from the Ministry of Finance. After the video, we will conduct a Q&A. Feel free to send your questions at any time during the talk via the Q&A button on the right side of the screen. So without further ado, let's start with Fernando's introduction. Fernando, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Camila. Uh, welcome all to the Capacity Development Talks of the International Monetary Fund. You know that almost every country in the world has suffered an unprecedented economic shock as the consequence of the COVID-19 pandemic. While most countries were faced with the largest economic downturn in almost a century, the direct and indirect economic impact of the pandemic has been very different in every case. So for many countries, um, it has been the sudden stop in economic activity due to the comprehensive and prolonged lockdowns. But in some of the countries, uh, the, the, the impact, the indirect impact came mainly from the fall in tourism and other proximity industries. Yet, in other countries, for instance, suffered the drop in some commodity prices that hit exports and public revenue. That's the case, for instance, of oil, oil exporters. So, we at the IMF have adapted our technical assistance and training to help the member countries to address all these challenges in their own specific way. At the Institute for Capacity Development, we have focused on building the capacity of central banks and the Ministry of Finance to analyze the impact of the COVID-19 and forecast the impact of alternative policies so that the authorities could design the best policies for their population. If anything, uh, the current shock has reinforced the need for well-developed, flexible and easily adaptable macro macroeconomic frameworks. In this vein, the Institute for Capacity Development has already provided uh, technical assistance to Armenia, Cambodia, Colombia, Georgia, Ghana, Rwanda, and Vietnam to adjust their ma macroeconomic frameworks or to develop new ones to analyze the impact of the COVID shock. In today's CD talk, we are going to present the case of Colombia. One of the earliest interventions that we did in order to adjust the macroeconomic framework to the impact of COVID-19. Immediately after the impact of the start of the pandemic, we assisted the Colombian authorities in adapting their macroeconomic models to better manage the crisis. In a pre-recorded interview, which was uploaded to IMF Connect yesterday, uh, Andres Gonzalez and Diego Rodriguez, which are economists from the IMF Institute for Capacity Development, asked the authorities of the Central Bank and the Ministry of Finance of Colombia about the impact of the COVID-19 in their country and how the use of models is helping them to address the shock and whether the IMF's technical assistance was effective while being delivered virtually. At the end of the interview, we will open the floor, as, as uh, Camila just said, for a live discussion where you will be able to submit your questions via the chat here that you have down below there. And thank you for the questions which were already submitted by via Facebook, which we will have also a chance to answer. So this is your opportunity to ask the head of the fiscal policy analysis of the Central Bank of Colombia and the deputy director of macroeconomic programming at the Ministry of Finance of Colombia about how they address the how they, the, the, how they build the policies to address the COVID shock and what type of information was gained from the use of macroeconomic models that they build with the assistance of the IMF. I hope that you find the conversation interesting and useful to understand the challenges of Colombia and the way we at the Institute of Capacity Development could help build institutional capacity to confront the COVID shock in your country. So back to you, Camila. Thank you, Fernando. <laughs> I'm excited to discuss further how other countries can apply for IMF's technical assistance during the Q&A. Now, uh, please choose the active speaker mode so the video fills your screen 
if it's not filling it already. And we will watch um, the interview with the Colombian authorities. We are here with uh, Sebastián Corrales, head of the Fiscal Policy Analysis Division at the Central Bank of Colombia, Banco de la República, and with Mr. Daniel Wills, Deputy Director of Macroeconomic Programming Division at the Ministry of Finance in Colombia. Uh, today we will talk about the impact of the COVID shock in the economy, the policy responses associated with the policy shock, with the COVID shock, and the challenges that the macro framework and the macro macroeconomic models uh, had or confronted after the COVID shock. Uh, I would like to say that this TA, this technical assistance, uh, was conducted in two phases. First, <coughs> we visited Colombia uh, and we helped the authorities develop a macroeconomic model that have both features, the fiscal and monetary policy analysis. And in the second mission that, was, that took place after the COVID shock, the authorities requested a follow-up to tailor the models and adjust them to better analyze the COVID shock. So, uh, Daniel, could you please tell us uh, what are the main macroeconomic impacts of the COVID shock in the, in the economy? The macroeconomic impacts were dramatic, of course, uh, in Colombia, just like everywhere else. The GDP fell during the second quarter by 15.5%. That's the largest drop on record. And the unemployment rate almost doubled. The potential output was probably hit as well because of inefficient bankruptcies and adverse productivity effects of the sectoral shifts. On balance, the shock on the aggregate demand was bigger than the shock on the aggregate supply. And that means that the inflation will end the year below the central bank's target, that is 3% in Colombia. Exports plummeted. The main export in Colombia is oil. And because of the price drop, the value of exports uh, dropped significantly. Because of all of that, the fiscal, uh, well, the government revenues decreased importantly, and the fiscal deficit expanded by six percentage points. And the public debt will increase by 15 percentage points. Sebastian, after hearing on all these macroeconomic impacts, uh, what were the monetary policy actions uh, designed at the central bank to counteract the effects of the COVID shock? Indeed, Andres, the shock has been dramatic, and the central bank swiftly adopted measures to stabilize the functioning of the key financial markets and to guarantee the smooth operation of the payment system. Repos were expanded uh, in terms of tenor, collateral, uh, counterparts, and size. Um, also, programs to outright pur of uh, outright purchases of public and private bonds in the secondary market were rapidly announced and completed. On the other hand, um, foreign currency hedging was promptly supplied to guarantee short-term funding. To preserve the adequate functioning of the credit markets, the previous measures were complemented with the provision of permanent liquidity by the reduction in the domestic reserve requirements. Overall, as Daniel was mentioning, the, the negative impact on the economy has translated into uh, a reduction in inflation and inflation expectations. And this has led the central bank to cut the monetary policy rate um, by 225 basis points since March. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, I ju we just heard the, the reaction of the central bank to contract the, the COVID shock. Could you tell us briefly what were the policy, the fiscal policy actions taken to contract the shock? Yes, uh, there were three main uh, fiscal actions. And the first was a very ambitious cash transfer program uh, to transfer cash to the most vulnerable households in Colombia. Also, we undertook uh, subsidy programs, uh, subsidizing firms that would keep their employees on payroll. And last, 
there was a program of public guarantees that would ensure that uh, credit would continue to flow at this moment of heightened risk aversion. All, all this uh, put uh, pressure on, on expenditures. And as I mentioned before, the revenues were decreasing. Because of that, the government was forced to temporarily suspend our fiscal rule for the years 2020 and 2021. We just we just heard the the, the tremendous impact that this had, had on the Colombian economy and the policy reactions that both the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank took to undertake uh, to counteract the impact of the COVID shock. I just want Daniel or Sebastian to tell me what are the main channels through which the shock is affecting the Colombian economy. In the case of Colombia, as in as in many other countries. The, the shock has derived in an environment of high uncertainty. Uh, since the virus spreads very rapidly and our health system was not ready to deal with a massive inflow of critical patients, uh, voluntary and, lock and mandatory lockdown measures were implemented. Uh, this translated into a supply and demand shock firms, most of the firms had to cut on production, while others had to completely stop operating. And of course, some sectors were more affected than others. Households, on the other hand, uh, were limited to demand goods and services, not only because of the lockdown measures, but also um, because of uncertainty about their future income. On the, on the external side, and as Daniel was mentioning, the, uh, the, the synchronized lockdown measures translated into a drop in external demand. And our exports have, have dropped uh, because of this. Ad additionally, in the financial, international financial markets, uh, uncertainty has increased and this has led to a uh, relatively increase in, um, in our risk premiums. Thanks, Sebastian. L let me ask you one question. And this is, this is a little bit more technical. And, and it's why are the models important for, for Central Bank and the Ministry of Finance in Colombia? That's a very good question, Diego, thanks. Um, well, well, in general, models are good because they provide a structure to the economic discussions. But, but allow me to provide some context about the macroeconomic framework um, in the case of Colombia, which is embedded into the models. The country has an inflation targeted targeting regime with flexible exchange rate and a relatively sound fiscal policy. And the country has benefited greatly from the flexibility <clears throat> of the exchange rate, in part because dollarization is nil and there have not been any large currency mismatches. Additionally, the fiscal we have a fiscal rule and a medium-term fiscal framework which has strengthened the confidence among the economic actors. Now, in this context, models are used on a regular basis to produce macroeconomic forecast and to evaluate different policy scenarios. And this is very useful for decision makers because they can have a better understanding of the policy implications. Thanks, Sebastian. Let me ask Daniel one question, and is how do you manage to incorporate the specific regularities of the COVID shock into the models? So the nature of the COVID shock was <coughs> unprecedented and, and very different from the standard shocks that our mo the mo models we use in normal times are designed to, to deal with. So, so we had to modify the model substantially, and we did that in two parts. In the, for the short run, we used input-output analysis to introduce the lockdowns of each of the sectors of the economy. We complemented that uh, looking towards a medium run with uh, oil shocks, specifically uh, shocks to the price of oil, a uh, federal reserve that would keep the monetary, monetary policy rate low for long, 
And we also introduced into the model the fiscal response to counteract uh, the negative shock on the aggregate demand. So overall, we combine short-term forecast with the general equilibrium analysis. And I think that is very, very useful because it allowed to introduce expert knowledge and convey information into these longer term relationships that are embedded in the general equilibrium models. Thanks, Daniel. Um, another question for both of you, and, and it will be important for us to know what has been the impact of this new macroeconomic framework developed with assistance of ICD in the, in the policy making decision in Colombia? The impact has been substantial. It, ha it has been very useful for us at the Ministry of Finance in particular. We use the models to build the forecast uh, in the medium term fiscal framework that uh, Sebastian referred to. And we have a box explaining the methodology. We also use it to quantify the impact of the fiscal stimulus that is currently under, being undertaken. Uh, the, this uh, program is called uh, New Deal for the Future of Colombia. And last but not least, it has allowed us to have a better communication with uh, markets, with uh, multilateral agencies, with banks, uh, because it is very useful to have a methodology that was developed together with the central bank that is independent from the government and with the help of the IMF that gives confidence in the tools that we're using and, of course, in the forecast that we are including uh, to, to, to produce our fiscal numbers. I just would like to add to Daniel's words that this T8 and has, has, has a strengthened the interinstitutional communication between the Minister of Finance and the Central Bank, and as well as with the IMF. Um, we, we may disagree on some of the assumptions or some of the results, but having this common model, this common tool, allows us to have a common language uh, from where we can start the conversations and, and, and discuss the economic implications. Thank you, thank you. One last question for Daniel, and, and, and this is regarding the fact that this TA mission was conducted with in situ delivery and also virtual delivery. Do, do you see any complementarities among these two, two types of delivery for, for, for the countries? Yes, let me elaborate on the details of the technical assistance. We had two visits by the staff of the ICT here in Colombia. And in between the visits, we held uh, virtual meetings every two weeks. Uh, in between or during those two weeks, the teams of the central bank and the Ministry of Finance would work together, would gain ownership of the model, and would produce results, and would have questions that, that were answered every two weeks by the staff of the ICD. After the pandemic started, uh, we couldn't have uh, on-site visits anymore, and we were forced to rely on, on, light, on, on, on the online tools only. Overall, uh, my take on this is the on-site visits are very useful, but 90% of the work can be done virtually without any trouble. I just want to thank Sebastian and Daniel for accepting our uh, invitation to participate in the interview and for sharing with us uh, the use of the macroeconomic models and the challenges that the Colombian economy has uh, confronted after the COVID shock. Um, again, this is a, a, an example of a technical assistance mission, and it's an example of how the IMF and ICD are supporting countries to uh, adjust their macroeconomic models and macroeconomic frameworks to analyze the impact of the COVID shock. Thank you. And thank you, Andres and Diego. This technical assistance was uh, very useful for us. It allowed us to improve our technical
tools a big deal. So in the name of the Ministry of Finance and in, in the name of uh, the government of Colombia, I would like to thank you again. In, indeed, I'll subscribe to Daniel's words and to thank you for this um, great TA and for helping us to enhance our economic analysis. Great. Uh, just a reminder that you are able to watch this video at IMF Connect. And uh, soon I will post it also at IMF Capacity Development Facebook channel. Now, we have about 10 minutes left, and I want to use this time wisely. Let me start with a question posted on the Q&A button. Sebastian. You mentioned that the central bank responded by lowering interest rate and providing liquidity to the economy. Was the policy responded to a liquidity crunch? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Well, in, in, in the context of this dramatic slowdown in activity due to COVID-19, there's certainly a concern about cash flows in the economy. And, uh, and, and in that sense, the first actions taken by the central bank, uh, I believe we're aiming at guaranteeing the sufficient liquidity for the var various agents in the economy to be able to access their savings, uh, their sources of savings, but also for the financial system to have enough resources to finance the uh, needs from the firms and households. Thank you. Now, Danielle, you mentioned that you had used the model for analyzing Compromiso por Colombia. Which fiscal instruments did you consider and how do you rank alternative policies? Yes, Camila, so, so we use the model to quantify the macroeconomic impact of this uh, stimulus program. And this was very interesting because uh, the program has various different components. Uh, one component is uh, investment in public investment. So basically money going to finance the buildup of public capital, such as infrastructure. There was also money going to boost aggregate demand in the short run, but a very, very big part of the program consists in uh, the government putting relatively small amounts of money that would leverage much higher investment from the private sector. So the model allowed us to introduce these different components and quantify the full general equilibrium impact it would have on growth, on investment, etc. Thank you. Thank you. Now a question from Facebook. Fernando. How can a country apply for IMF technical assistance? Are there costs associated with it? And how is the workload split between the receiving country and the IMF staff? Well, thank you very much, Camila, and thank you, the Facebook follower who has uh, made this question. The, the, this, this probably is, is in the mind of, of uh, a few central banks or ministries of finance that may be interested in, in, in this type of technical assistance. The way to contact us in order to, to have a project uh, that reinforces your macroeconomic uh, frameworks is through the team, the IMF team of the country, so your mission chief or your desk economist. You just contact your mission chief for the country in which you are, and they will transmit the request to us. They will evaluate it. They will discuss with you the uh, priority that this request has in terms of the um, weaknesses or areas for development that uh, IMF could uh, discuss with you in the in the framework of the Article Four. We have with this institution, and they will uh, give us the, 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 the heads up that this assistance is, is is needed, and we will try to program it as soon as possible. Now, the cost associated with the TA, uh, that those are good news. The TA is free. The TA is free for everybody except for the rich countries. I'm afraid the uh, advanced economies do have to pay the cost of the TA. It's, it's, a, it's a way of defraying, defraying just the cost of, of providing this, this TA. But for everybody else, the emerging market, low-income countries, is absolutely free. 
And finally, the, the, I see that the person who asked the question knows a little bit that the, 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 the assistance is, is really taxing at some point on the resources of the country. In the, the main cost is not a monetary cost, it's the cost of the time of, of your time, of the time of the country that is requesting the assistance, because ultimately it's you who build the macro framework, it's you who build the model. We help you to do so, we teach you, we guide you every step of the way, but we need your time. If, the, if you don't have enough staff, if the staff is too busy, it's not going to be successful. You need to put some resources into building the models and building the macro frameworks for us to be able to deliver this, this, this transfer of knowledge to your team. So there is a burden sharing. Uh, we will certainly accompany you every, every step of the way, but we need your time as well. Thank you very much. I have a good follow-up question for Andres and Diego. What are the logistics of the virtual TA delivery? TA, um, it's technical assistance. What would the country have to provide in terms of resources, IT infrastructure, and other needs to ensure effective the virtual delivery? Uh, Camila, thank you. I, I think that the most important uh, part here is to have a good internet connection and also access to the software that is needed for the technical assistance. Those are the two things that will be very, very important. And I don't know if Diego has other comments on that. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, thanks. I, I would like to complement your, your response. Andres indicating that ICD is now offering uh, virtual courses in addition to the existing online catalog that, uh, that the ICD had. And, and this will be a really good way to complement and enhance the technical assistance that is delivering to the partners. That is true. Um, there are many free um, online courses at EDX, um, the IMF uh, channel for online courses. And there are courses also at our digital catalog uh, at imf.org. Uh, now back to Daniel and Sebastian. What were the technical skills in your institutions before the technical assistance delivered by the IMF? Which is the expertise required to enhance the benefits of these types of assistance? Well, if I, if I may start, uh, <laughs> the, well, this TA was about building a DSG model, right? Uh, with a, a, a strong, module on fiscal policy and in the case of the central bank the technical staff uh, uses dsg models on a regular basis to produce the economic analysis for the monetary policy report or for questions that the board of directors may have in that sense the staff participated in the technical assistance was somehow familiar with these tools and I believe this is very important for whatever is going to be delivered to, to the country. And I think it is important because it can, it helps to effectively integrate these new tools into the processes that the institutions may have, um, as has been the case with the coffee model developed with the IMF in the case of the central bank. Um, Thank you. To, Daniel, do you have do you have any um, just a, a short short follow up? Uh, so at the Ministry of Finance, we we had much uh, less experience with DSG models than our colleagues uh, from the central bank. So doing these uh, technical assistance together was very useful for us. One of our team members have worked previously at the central bank, so he had some experience in computer programming, etc. Uh, but working together allowed us uh, not only to learn from the staff of uh, IMF and, and the ICD, but also from our colleagues in the central bank. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Um, Danielle, one more question from the Q&A. Uh, and this question is regarding the time frame um, of Compromiso for Colombia. Can you talk about it a little bit? 
Yes, sure. So uh, we quantify, we made the quantification in a time frame of uh, 10 years. Uh, so some of the projects I mentioned are uh, related to infrastructure and public uh, investment. So, so those take uh, longer pe periods of, of time, but most of the impact is uh, was quantified for next year and the following, so 2021 and 2022. Fantastic. Well, um, it's 10.31. I'm afraid we have reached uh, the end of our session. Let me take this opportunity to thank you all for your contributions on behalf of the IMF staff and the Colombian authorities and for allowing us to close our city talks with a golden key, or as you say in Colombia, con un broche de oro. Just a quick reminder then that tomorrow there'll be a training session on fiscal consequences of COVID-19 and the policy responses in, Arab, in the Arab world. I hope you'll be able to participate at that as well. Hasta luego and goodbye.